Today we're making this table runner. You can really adjust this table runner to be any length you want. You just need to take my idea and run with it. Ha ha, pun intended. <laughs> to make this table runner, you'll need some fabric adhesive. Um, here I'm using Heat and Bond Life. You can use any kind you like. And you'll need a copy of the dress applique, which is attached to the description box of this video. And I'll go over the fabric requirements as we get to that specific part of the video. To make the dress applique, you want to take a copy of the pattern that I have online, and you're going to want to trace that onto your fabric adhesive. Um, I have a light box that I use to do this, but if you don't have a light box, you can uh, tape your pattern to a window and the light will come through it and you'll have your own light box. If you're not familiar with this fabric adhesive, it has a bumpy side and a paper side. You want to draw on the paper side of this. When you're tracing the dresses out, you can make them with a round neck or v-neck and you can make them any length you want. When you cut your fabric adhesive paper, don't cut exactly on the lines that you drew. You want to leave a little extra. For each dress, you will need a scrap of fabric approximately 5 inches by 8.5 inches long, and you will iron the fabric adhesive to the wrong side of this fabric. You want paper side up for your fabric adhesive so it does not stick to your iron. For this table runner, I have made four dresses. I cut each dress a different length and I made them in different colors with different necklines, but you could actually make them all exactly the same if you wanted them to be. Double check the directions on your fabric adhesive so you know what temperature to set your iron at. You really don't want it to be too hot or too cool. When your dresses have cooled, you'll want to cut them out on the lines that you have drawn. The background fabric for each dress will be 8 inches by 10 and a half inches. I have four dresses, so I'm going to cut four pieces of material. We are going to place one dress in the center of each rectangle. The easiest way to find the center of your rectangle is just fold the fabric and finger press it. Before we can iron our dresses down, we'll need to remove the back paper. When you remove the back paper, the fabric should have like a rubber backing to it now, and it should be smooth if it was ironed correctly. To find the center mark for our dresses, we can fold them in half lengthwise and finger press a crease in them. That way we can easily line them up with the background fabric. Once you have your dress in the position that you want it in, you'll want to iron it down. But we're going to start by just ironing down the bottom of the dress. 
If you want to add a piece of ribbon for like a belt around the dress, you can slide that in right now um, before you've ironed the top of the dress and then you can iron over it and it'll hold um, your ribbon in place. For this pink dress, I used two pieces of ribbon to border the neckline and I used fabric glue to hold it in place. For the blue dress in the right corner of the video, I made a little apron out of a small piece of fabric. I cut the fabric about 4 inches by 4 and a half inches long. I turned the fabric under a quarter of an inch and then I ironed it in place. I went to the opposite side of the fabric and I turned it under about a half an inch and I ironed that in place. I held the apron up to the dress that I wanted to put it on and I wanted to make sure for me that I had a little bit of dress sticking out from the bottom of the apron so it was the right length for me. I also thought about putting it on the longer dress but I didn't really like it on the long dress. Depending on the length of your dress you may have to adjust the length of this apron. Once I double checked the length of this apron I wanted to sew a stitch across the bottom where the quarter inch is where I ironed under, uh, just a regular uh, straight stitch. And then at the top I want to sew a very loose stitch so that I can gather it up and make it a ruffle. So I want to gather the apron up and turn under the sides of the apron so that it fits at the waist of the dress. Once I have the waist, the width that I want it to be, I'm going to take it over the sewing machine and sew across the stitches that I've already made so that I secure them and they don't move. For the sides of the apron, I'm just going to turn them to the back and sew a straight stitch down the side so that the raw edges are all pointing to the back of the apron and you won't see them when I attach it to the dress. For my next dress, my yellow dress, I'm going to center it and I'm going to iron it down in place. I decided not to put a piece of ribbon around the waist of this and after I iron it down and sew it, I'm going to put an embellishment on it. Once you have ironed all of your dresses to the background fabric, you'll want to take them to the sewing machine and do some type of stitching around the edge of the dress to permanently attach it to the background fabric. You can use whatever kind of stitch you like. It can be a simple straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, a satin stitch, or whatever your machine has that you would like to use. Once your dresses are sewn down, you can add the rest of your embellishments. Here I'm just going to sew the apron on around the waistband and I'm going to tie my ribbon and cut off any excess that I don't want. 
For the little necklace I have, I just put some beads on a string and sewed them down around the neckline of the dress. For the center of your table runner and for your border fabric, you're going to need approximately a half a yard of material. It is going to need to be at least 18 inches wide by 42 inches. You're not going to have any extra uh, in the width of this fabric. You will need to cut four two and a half inch strips the length of the fabric. And you need to cut one rectangle eight inches by ten and a half inches. The center rectangle is the same size as the background fabric used for the dresses. The fabric in this photo is actually 19 inches wide by 42 inches long. Next we're going to lay out our dresses in the order that we want them to be in our table runner. For our border fabric, our two and a half inch strip, we are going to attach that to only one side of each of these blocks. So for the two dresses that are on the left, we are going to sew the border strip to the left side of each of these. And for the two dresses on the right, we're going to sew the border fabric on the right side of each of these blocks. If it is easier for you, you can take this one strip and cut it into pieces that are 10 and a half inches long and then sew one strip to each of these blocks. I did not cut my border fabric. I stacked my dresses in the order that I wanted them to be. Two of the dresses have to have this border fabric on the right side of them and two of these dresses has to have this border fabric on the left side of them. So I stacked them in order. I took them to the sewing machine and I just sewed continuously down the strip. Once you have your border fabric sewn on, you'll want to iron them so that the seam allowances are going towards the border. Next, we'll need to cut our blocks apart and trim them up. So now we'll just make sure that we have two dresses with a border sewn on the left and two dresses with a border sewn on the right. We're going to take our dresses with the two borders sewn on the left and we're going to put them on top of each other and then sew them together right here on the right side with a quarter inch seam. Now we're going to take our two dresses with the border on the right side and we're going to sew them together. We're going to lay one on top of the other and sew the seam down the right side. We are going to finger press our seams towards the border. We'll finger press these seams for now and then we'll iron them when we iron our next piece. Now we're going to sew that center fabric, the center of our table runner, into place. And first we'll attach it to the left dresses. And we'll put it on top and sew a quarter inch seam. Now we'll sew the right side of our table runner to that center piece of fabric. 
we'll just lay it on top and we'll sew on the right side a quarter inch seam. Now we'll finger press our seams towards the border fabric, towards this center fabric. We will press all of our seam allowances towards the border fabric. Once we have ironed all of our seam allowances down, we'll get ready to sew on the side borders. We are going to have to sew two strips together because our panel is just over 45 inches long. Once you have sewed two strips together, you are ready to sew the border on one side of your panel. Once you've sewed that seam, you'll need to cut off the tail that you have and sew it to your last remaining border strip. Once you've sewed your two strips together, you will sew the two and a half inch strip border down the other side of your panel. We'll iron our seams nice and flat and press them towards the border, towards the outside edge. We'll need to trim off the excess fabric and square up our corners. For our accent border, we're going to need to cut three strips that are one and a half inches wide, the length of our fabric. So they're going to need to be 42 to 44 inches long. We're going to put right sides together and sew this border fabric, this accent fabric, onto the ends of our table runner first using a quarter inch seam. You'll want to be a little bit frugal with this material because you will not have much left over besides the salvages when we get done using this. I used one strip to do both of the ends and then I had a small strip of fabric left over. Once we've sewn this accent border on, we'll finger press the seam allowances towards the outside. We're going to trim off our ends and save the longest piece. We're going to sew this tail piece of fabric to a strip so that we have a long enough piece of fabric to do one of the sides.
we'll put right sides together and we'll sew on this border strip. We're going to iron all our seams towards the outside. We'll need to cut off this tail and sew it to our remaining strip so that we'll have a long enough piece for the last side. We'll sew these two strips together and use them for the remaining side of the table runner. Now that we've sewn our last strip on, we'll give it a good ironing. Well, we've got our tabletop sewn together. Now we just need to square up the corners and get ready for a quilt sandwich. For the quilt sandwich, you'll need to cut a piece of fabric for the back of the table runner. For this table runner, I just used a piece of muslin and I cut it two to three inches bigger than the table runner. I laid out a piece of batting and I cut it the same size as my backing fabric. So when I laid out the batting, I didn't end up with a piece that was going to be long enough for this table runner. So I decided to piece two pieces together. Um, and if you haven't done this, it's easy to do and it's really not noticeable in your finished project. So what you want to do is you want to make sure the two pieces that you're fitting together or cut are cut really straight. So I cut them with a rotary cutter so that I could get them to fit together really well. I'm going to add a piece that is longer than what I need so that I can strategically place this seam um, somewhere where you won't notice it under the quilt top. When you place your quilt top over a seam, I think it's a good idea to figure out how you can strategically hide this seam. Although it is really hard to see, um, I don't want to put it under a white piece of fabric just in case you could possibly see it. The best place to position it is under a seam because uh, the fabric is thick there um, and you won't have any chance of feeling it or noticing it. So I'm going to take the two pieces of batting to the sew machine and I'm not overlapping them because I don't want them to be any thicker than um, what they normally would be. So I'm just going to butt the two seams together and put the seam right in the middle of my presser foot, right in the center. And then I'm going to do a zigzag stitch um, so that uh, the seam is in the middle of my presser foot and the zigzag stitch is going to both sides um, of the batting. Um, some people when they do this stitch and put two pieces of batting together they like to put a piece of some kind of interfacing tape over the seam um, to make it stronger but I don't really think it's necessary you're spending extra money when you really don't need it. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's finished and you can see it went together really nicely. You really can't see an opening um, and it's as strong as the batting is. Um, on this side I used a yellow thread was in my bobbin and on the top was a cream colored thread and the cream color blends in really nicely. You don't really see it. So when you sew them together you do end up with a line. The texture is a little bit different. That's why I like to strategically place it so that it is under a seam in my quilt top um, or under like a fabric that has a lot a big design or design because um, you just won't notice it. So now I have my quilt sandwich. I have my top fabric, my batting, and my back fabric and I want to make sure these are pressed really nicely. As you can see um, the fabric I'm using for the back is really wrinkled, so I want to get all the wrinkles out and get the wrinkles out of my batting. Here I'm ironing the back fabric to make sure I get all the wrinkles out and everything is laying nice and flat.
For this quilt top, I used a spray adhesive to base the layers together and then I used a few safety pins in the corners just for extra protection. Once you have your layers um, basted together, you'll want to do some kind of top stitching to hold the layers together. Um, you can do free motion quilting or you can use straight line stitching on your sewing machine with a walking foot. I use a little of both. Um, I did free motion quilting around the dresses and then I did some straight line stitching um, in the borders. To bind the quilt I used a quarter yard of fabric and I cut two inch strips. I folded them in half and ironed them. I sewed the binding to the back of the table runner first, raw edges to raw edges. Then I wrapped it around to the front and I machine stitched it down in place. If you haven't made seam binding before or binded a quilt before, you can check out my video called Hello Gorgeous where I use bias tape to finish a wall hanging. It is a quick and easy way to finish a project. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully you make this table runner. As always, thank you for watching and please like, comment, and subscribe.